Hello and welcome to another amazing episode of TMC, where we are here to help you take your relationship from, from surviving, surviving to, to thriving. thriving. If this is your first time joining us on TMC, go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, and hit that notification. Today on TMC, we have James and Robin Benson. Been married for 23 years. Yeah. This year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. When exactly? Same for us. Okay. What's wow. going on? September. September. Okay. Yeah. We are yeah. uh, August 31st. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you got married yeah. like three weeks after you guys. Wow. Awesome. 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 Wonderful. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having us. We are honored to be on with you guys. My name is James Vincent and I am Robin Vincent. <laughs> I'm the better half. Yes, the she's the better three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. So we are ministers in Corinth, Texas, just outside of Dallas. We're from New Orleans, Louisiana. Ooh, okay. Ooh, ooh, uh -huh. No look. No look. <laughs> Of course, have been married as long as we have, but also um, to be parents of five wonderful children, awesome. um, grandparents of one child, and to have been uh, ministers in the church for actually since before we got married. Yeah. So it's a wonderful privilege that the Lord uses us in the things that he uses us in. Just What is the advantages? Because here it is, you're 20, almost 23 years of marriage. And you've seen some disadvantages. I'm pretty sure you've seen marriages with other people, other Christian women, other Christian men who unequally yoke themselves in relationship. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for most of the time, from my experience, it never quite went well. It was always that force or that fight. I've seen God deliver some uh, people in the relationship, but for the most part, it never end well. So let me ask you this question. What is the advantage seen in your 23 years of life of both of you all being God seekers, God worshipers, and connected to God. How has that benefited your relationship? Well, for me, the reason why God had spoke to me and told me to pay attention was because he said that my purpose was wrapped in that. Come on now. And so he began to tell me, he began to speak to me, and he said, he said, Robin, you don't know this, but for what I've called you to do, you will need him. And for what I've called him to do, he will need you. And that was the first time anyone, my mama, my daddy, anybody had ever spoken purpose to me. I was like, wait, what? I have a purpose. Wait, hmm. like, really? So he was like, when he began to speak to me and say, no, I'm putting you together because you don't know what you're called to do. And it involves him. And so that really got my attention because I had never had anybody, you know, everybody tells you, oh, you should be a doctor. Oh, you should be a lawyer. Oh, you should be, you know, oh, well, you're good with people. You should, you know, but nobody had ever said you already have a purpose mm. and this one will be a part of that purpose. So I was, like I said, I was newly saved, a new born again Christian. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have a purpose. Hmm. And so that's what really made me pursue it even more because I was like, and I didn't pursue him. I pursued the purpose. Mm. I said, wow. I didn't pursue him. I was just going, God, okay, what does that look like? Yes. Okay, God, like, how do I position myself? Okay, mm. Lord, what is it that you're trying to bring out of me? What you're trying to show him? What are you trying to reveal to me about him? You know, I was trying to put the pieces together as God would reveal them to me. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, oh, okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. Oh, that's how, you know, it's kind of like how Ruth had to position herself with Boaz. Mm -hmm. She had to know where to go, when to go there. Mm -hmm. You know, she had to have the wisdom spoken into her to know how to position herself. And so God began to do that in my life. From my side of things, you know, when we first dated, of course, for me, it was, <laughs> for me, you know, I was 19 years old and she was a little older than me. So I was just like, oh, I well, still am. I'm a baller. <laughs> I'm a baller. Yeah. I got me an older girl. You know? 
then, you know, then of course me being young, I was, I was stupid and, and I went off with another girl. And, and so what I, what I noticed when I was dating this other girl, she was not making me better. Oh, you know, <laughs> she was not making me better. And that's, and I knew in me, I was, I was always somebody, even though I didn't like to be in uncomfortable situations, I'm still the same way. I don't like to be in uncomfortable situations, but because I know it's what I need, I'll stay in it. Mm. You know, even though I still, I still, I'm, I'm in my forties now and I still don't like it, but I remain in those places because I know it's good for me. Yeah. And so when I was with this girl, I would just ask, well, what do you want to do? And she said, well, what do you want to do? I want to do whatever you want to do. And I said, well, and little, just little situations like that, yeah. you know, yeah. just, I mean, I need some, I need something from you. Yeah. And I thought to myself, man, Robin made me better. Robin pushed me, Robin challenged me. Of course, here we are, you know, I got back with her. And for me, that's what it was. You know, the being equally yoked, the being with somebody who's going after the same things as you, but not only that, someone who's even a little more fervent mm -hmm. than, than I was, that, that helped me become better. Wow. And that's, I feel like that's an advantage. I think that that's something that a lot of people need to understand. If that person is in some kind of way pushing you more towards the Lord, mm -hmm. some kind of way making you feel that where you are right now is not where you are going to be and, and aiming towards that thing that the Lord is wanting you uh, to be in the fullness of who you are. I think that that's a great advantage of me being with this woman. There's so much more that I could say, but that was for me, the thing that stood out. Wow. 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 And I'm listening to you from the moment you started to speak, Robin, and then you, James, and I'm listening to the nuggets that are coming out of you guys' mouth and the wisdom and knowledge that's being shared with the TMC listeners. I The first thing that hit me in the face was when Robin said she was seeking purpose with God. She wasn't seeking a relationship. She was seeking purpose with God. And God was like, Hey, pay attention to him. I have you paying attention to him for a reason. And then you <laughs> talked about James going off with someone else, but yet realizing, wait a minute, this person made me better. This person had me having a drive, having a pull. So it's very important for us and the listeners to understand that marriage is more about purpose than just being with someone that, that is yes. bigger than just me having somebody to go to bed with at night It's bigger than me having somebody to go to dinner with it's about purpose by evidence when you align yourself with someone that is connected to the purpose that god has for your life then you can do great things and that's where we get that longevity from that's where that 23 years comes from because the foundation the foundation of the relationships is what creates that longevity I think one of the main things for me in that uh, also is sometime in our early years of marriage, you know, because of course, and we'll probably talk a little bit more about this later on in the conversation, but marriage is, it's not easy. Yeah. It's, it's not easy when you're trying to meld two lives together. Yes. And, um, but early on in our marriage, the Lord gave me a dream. And in this dream, we were doing ministry together and not only were we doing ministry together, but we were old, we were like in our seventies or something like wow. that. And as I was getting ready to go off, you know, she walked in and she gave me my glasses and she was like, don't forget these. And I was like, what am I going to, what would I do without you? And she looked at me like, what would you do without me? And I remember thinking in this dream, my God, she is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And we were in our seventies, you know, and I was just like, man, I'm so in love with this woman. And I woke up from the dream. Wow. And, you know, we've had many, many times in our marriage where it's like, I don't know how much more of this I can take. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and <clears throat> I think about that dream and I say, but Lord, you gave me a hope yeah. to stay. You, you gave me that dream for a reason. So yeah. I'm not going to do something, you know, stupid out of my emotions, out of my unwillingness to change or, or whatever it is because you've already shown me the future. You've already mm -hmm. shown me what, what can be. Yeah. And I'm telling you, that's, it, it's, it's kept me in a lot of different situations. Not only that, but the fact that I love this woman more than anything in the world. Yeah. And so it, it helps me big time. Yeah. 
if you had one piece of advice before you got married, what would Ooh. you have liked that piece of advice to be? What is the one thing that you wish you knew before you got married? I'm going to go first, just because I know that my list is a lot shorter than hers. <laughs> so, you know, I think the biggest thing for me that stands out is that I wish I would have known what it looked like to be one. Mm. Um, because now, you know, it's as I when I got married, it was like, well, I don't understand what her problem is. She knows I love her. She knows I'm here. I'm here. I don't, I'm not going off with anybody else. I'm not doing anything. I'm not, you know, I try to be good. I take care of everybody. What's 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 the issue? And but you know, growing up. I didn't have oneness modeled for me, mm. at, you know, at all. My, my parents divorced when I was about 10 years old. And when my father remarried, he was kind of off to himself a lot. And my mother, she liked her, her private life and she loved to be off to herself and, and all that. So to me, I just didn't know what that looked like. And so in my mind, I was doing better than my parents. <laughs> I'm here, I'm at home. Yeah. Uh, I, I try to show you love and all of these things, but I knew she was looking more for the, the two of us to become one unit and to move together and to, to do life together and to, um, for, for us to, as we're raising our kids, as we're building a life, for it to look like what we are together. And I'm telling you, I mean, even I told her today, I said, even in some ways, hon, there's still some ways that I, you know, I can do a little bit better in being one. But I'm telling you, at first, my mindset was, leave me alone. Why, why can't you just leave me alone? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get what I'm doing wrong. Just leave me alone. <laughs> um, and so if I knew, if I had that modeled for me, uh, that would be something I feel would have been very beneficial in our life and in our marriage. I think it's important for people to learn what that looks like. I get that everybody goes through that journey and their process, mm -hmm. but to have an idea of what that looks like before they get married and then allow the Lord to form what it looks like for them personally. Oh, I love that. Yes. Oh, I love mm -hmm. that. And I think for me, it would just be ask questions ask questions don't assume anything mm. I think for me I just went off of my gut which is wrong don't do that <laughs> <laughs> do not do that like because you're going to be in for a lot of rude awakenings mm -hmm. and I really feel like many times we form our own opinions and ideas especially women Mm -hmm. especially, oh, yeah. especially as women, you know, we already have this picture in our minds of what they're That's going to be. Yeah. And so it's kind of like we begin to romanticize instead of dealing with reality, yeah. you know? And so I think that's something that I wish somebody would have said to me, like, okay, stay down to earth, stay in the reality, ask questions, you know, don't assume he's this or that. Don't say, oh, well, you know, when he rubs my back, I can tell he's a person that takes care of somebody. <laughs> no, do not assume, ask yeah. questions. Yeah, I, I want to <laughs> say, I want to say to some of the ladies out there, really, uh, just to tag on to what my wife is saying, you know, I know TV likes to portray one thing, but men are way smarter than y'all give them credit for. Mm -hmm. you, you, got, you got to understand that they know they know what to say. They know what buttons to push. They uh -oh. know what, you know, they know <laughs> they know when to do it. They know how to enter, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> just just understand that just the same way you're smart and you're in touch with certain things on the inside. Men are men are the same way. Yeah. They just move go about it differently. Yeah. So don't yeah. don't be tricked. Oh, don't yeah. be tricked. <laughs> See deeper. Wow. That's that's that's, that's two 
great things to know for someone to know before they get married. James, you talked about what oneness looks like. And I think that many of us, many of us, no matter how much we think we're in love or how much we think we're ready for marriage, many of us don't really know what oneness looks like. What does that yeah. really look like? And then you talked about, you said something that I thought is profound, having an idea of what that oneness looks like, but allowing God to mm, shape what it looks good. like for you yes. and your marriage. Yeah. And though yes. that's a nugget, that is yeah, a nugget for yeah. anyone yes. before they get married. That's important. And yeah. then uh, Robin asks questions because you are so, mm -hmm. you are so true. We are both women. We know we can assume <laughs> e everything we see we have a reasoning for it. Oh, he did this. I'm this because of this. Oh, this is that. Oh, that's because of that. This means he's that. And we do that and we form all these opinions and these thoughts. And we have these expectations based on those opinions and those thoughts. And that's why we get the rude awakenings because yes. like, oh, love, I thought you was caring. Wait a minute. You're a little bit <laughs> selfish. Wait a minute. I thought you was going to take care of business. You Because we assume things without asking questions. Yeah. And I think it's very important for yeah. anyone when you're going to marry somebody, ask questions. Ask questions. Yeah. Get to know them. And you definitely gave the sisters a nugget, Mr. James, <laughs> telling them, don't, don't, men are a lot smarter than you think they are. So they know what to do. They know how to do it. They know how to say it. And I think what Robin said about things being romanticized there definitely men know that that's something that women want they want yes. their romance and they they want somebody to come in and sweep them off their feet so still can get a groove back and all of this but <laughs> you're not looking at that he may just be doing those things for the moment yeah, and what happens yeah. if that's not really who he is right yeah yeah, absolutely. yeah. and, and that, that actually it, that happens uh -huh. More than not, because yeah. we doing what Robert said. We assuming, yeah. oh, he's mm -hmm. doing this. This is how he gonna be forever. Now he's just trying to get you to let him move in. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. You said you you said something, James, that I want you. I want you to just just dig into a little bit. You talked about mm -hmm. uh, that oneness. I, mm -hmm. My question for you is, uh, in your relationship, what do that oneness look like? Well, you know, one of the things that has helped me in becoming one as a man, because uh, what uh, was mentioned a moment ago is about selfishness. And I know that men, I can't speak for all men, mm -hmm. but a lot of us have a lot of selfish ways. Mm -hmm. You know, we think about ourselves first. Mm -hmm. We think about uh, what, how things will affect us before they, before we think about everyone else. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we can make, you know, stupid decisions because of that. So a lot of times things will go lacking because of that my journey to becoming one with my wife had to begin with me putting her first i had to begin to practice that in in practical ways mm -hmm. you know in order for me to see my own heart change you know things like things like not treating her bad when i'm mad at her <laughs> which is i mean Men, men, when we get emotional, we like really, it's, it's deep because we don't always go there. Yeah. But when we get emotional, sometimes it can, it comes from a very deep place. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm mad at her, I'm like mad at her for real. And, you know, things like, you know, childish stuff. Like I would just, I wouldn't talk to her for a week, mm -hmm. you know, because that's how mad I was. I was that, I was that, I was that hurt on the inside. It's like, you know what? Fine, and she she gonna know how hurt I am because I'm not. But at the end of the day, I feel for becoming one from, and I can speak from a man's standpoint. Becoming one also means that you have to lay your own self down, mm -hmm. you, you, and and so using the example that I just used, I had to come to a place where me being mad was not the thing that was going to rule how we related to each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have to also understand that how I respond in that situation can affect our oneness. So of course, of course, you're gonna have times where you're angry with your spouse or you're upset or disappointed some kind of way, you have a disagreement, yeah. but how will that affect your oneness? Yeah. And not only how will it affect it, but how will you protect it? And that's, uh, that's how I had to really begin to think. So I'm telling you, I mean, over the past few years or so, I've been a whole lot better about, you know what? I know I'm mad, 
at the end of the day, this is my wife yeah. and this situation may linger on or may come back or may show up again, but I have to make her know that it doesn't affect how I feel about her overall. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I do little things that make her know that, yeah, you hurt my feelings. Yeah, you, yeah, you made me mad, but guess what? This little action right here shows you that we're still together. Yeah. We're still one. We're still, this is being protected. Yeah. And I mean, literally that's, that's been a big, huge lesson for me. And that's only a small part of being one, but that's a kind of a practical thing that I've done on that front. Absolutely. I love that. I'm over here taking notes. I'm over here taking <laughs> notes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so we're talking about oneness and with mm -hmm. that being something that has kind of been a part of the thing, what do you think are some key components to a thriving marriage? You talked about the oneness and let's talk about some other key components to mm -hmm. a thriving marriage. Putting God's will first in our lives is what keeps us centered. Yeah. You know, it's not, you know, I tell James all the time, it's not about me versus you. It's not your desire versus my desire. It's God's desire. Mm -hmm. And so when we put God's desire first, it really brings us into that place of Me oneness. Too. It just pulls us. There's a magnetism about it that draws us into that place of oneness or unity. And so we put God first. But for me, personally, I can say it's, you know, we always hear about unconditional love, mm -hmm. but for me, it has been unconditional forgiveness. Mm. Oh, you know? wow. It's wow. been unconditional forgiveness, you know, where I can't say, okay, you have to measure up to be forgiven, mm. you know, or mm. you, you know, you have to meet my expectation to be forgiven. I can't say that. I can't say, well, I expected you to do this and you didn't do that. So I'm going to just pout for another three days and then I'm going to see if I'm ready to forgive you. No, I have to walk and live my life. If I'm going to live with you, I'm mm -hmm. going to have to live in unconditional forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And that means that not only do I recognize his sin, but I recognize mine as well. In other words, I can extend mercy because I received mercy, mm -hmm. you know? So when I know that, you know, I've received mercy from God, then I can get, extend mercy to him. If I've received forgiveness, if I've received grace, if I've received love from God, then I have a portion to extend to him. Because I remember there came a time in our marriage where it just seemed like we were button heads about everything. Oh, wow. And I mean, everything, the littlest thing. And it was like everything became a fire. You know, it was just crazy. I mean, it was, I, I couldn't even believe it myself, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And so what that taught me was that I had let things get out of hand that I wasn't, I had, in other words, I had let the offenses pile up. Mm -hmm. I had let those offenses pile up and I no longer had the capacity to extend forgiveness. And so I remember you know, really praying. And I heard the voice of the Lord speak in my heart and begin to say, Robin, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to take a risk. Mm -hmm. He said, I want to want you to take a risk and just forgive him anyhow. Just forgive all those things that you know. I mean, even just this week alone, he has done so many things that he does not deserve forgiveness. He said, but take the risk. He said, because I'm going to renew some things. Mm -hmm. And so as he begins, as I took that risk, it was like my heart just changed. Mm -hmm. My heart changed and it just melted. And it was like I was seeing him in a new way. I was seeing a new person before me, mm -hmm. you know, and I was feeling new. I was my, my feelings, my heart, my mind was in a different space. And so when he asked me to take the risk and do that, and I saw the outcome, I saw the results of that, I said, well, now I have to learn to forgive quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to learn to forgive quickly. I got to understand that it is not about what he deserved. It is all about what the Lord has extended to me. Mm -hmm. And if he extended to me, I can extend it to him. Mm -hmm. For me, one of, the, one of the keys to, well, I'll give two keys. One of them is real quick. 
flirt with that woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's, I think that that's really, you know, you know, I always tell her how beautiful I think she is and, and all that and just make her know that how much I love her, do little things for her just out of the blue, just to show her how much I appreciate it. That, you know, but a lot of times that, that can also be surface stuff when there's not, something happened on the inside oh, yeah and i and i'm telling you for me the my appreciation for her that makes me do that learning to appreciate what i have because she's she's far from perfect you know i'm far from perfect yeah. we're you know we're just we're two imperfect people mm -hmm. desiring to love god and be the most for him and for each other and for our family but in that as we're learning to appreciate what we have at the time that we have it you know not not living in what we think we should have, not living in what we think things are supposed to look like. No. Guess what? The journey is continuing. What we look like at 15 years of marriage <laughs> is hopefully not what we're going to look like at 45 years of marriage. No. Hopefully there's growth in the process. Mm -hmm. So appreciating what we are at 15 years, appreciating what we are at 20 years and, and so on and so forth. Uh, appreciating the moments, appreciating who she is in this moment, and then also being willing to grow uh, again to, with the men. And I mean, I know there's a lot of ladies who fall in this category, but uh, you know, a lot of men can be uh, they're digging their heels in. It's like, no, this is the way it is. This is, I don't know why you're poking at me. Just, just, just accept it. <laughs> this is the way it is. But you know, I've been challenged quite a bit in my heart to think about her first, to think about my family first, to see beyond me and the way that I interpret things and the way that I process things and the way that I think things are supposed to look mm -hmm. and just allow the Lord to define those things for me. Mm -hmm. Not only that, using my wife and, and her heart and her experience to invade my own. If I'm only seeing things from my viewpoint and only seeing things through what I think is correct, then I'm, I, can, I can be stuck and I'm not growing. And so that's something that I had to really learn that just because uh, what she's saying to me makes no sense does not mean that it's not real for her. Mm -hmm. And so I have to be willing to see it from, see things from that standpoint. And then it helps me grow not only in my marriage, but relationships outside of my marriage. It helps me minister to people better. <laughs> you know, it helps me to relate to God in a better way. Lord, you, yeah. Lord, I don't, I don't see what you see. You see, you see things from a whole different vantage point than I see them. And, and we both had to learn to do that. We mm -hmm. both had to learn, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm abandoning my way of seeing things so that we can mm -hmm. get on the same yeah. page. Again, that it's it's not all about you, and this is for men and women. You know, if you if you're thinking that it's all about you, well, then you're already entering mm -hmm. marriage in a with a wrong opposite of God Absolutely. mindset. Because you know, Jesus said Himself, "For God so loved the world that He sent His only Son." Right. He loved. He wasn't thinking about Himself. He was thinking about us, mm -hmm. and then He gave us His Son. So. Uh, so it's not all about us. And then understand that that person that you're marrying is not perfect. Whatever image you think you have of that person that that is so grand and, and what you want is is what that person fits. Well, the reality is most likely that they don't fit that. <laughs> they don't fit your perfect image. So um, that one of the deceptions that causes marriages to start to fall apart is that we're not measuring up to each other's standards and expectations. A lot of times the expectations are unrealistic and maybe down the line, they'll be realistic. One thing that my wife and I say quite often is that, man, some people don't know how to be married. <laughs> and, one of, and one of the reasons that we say that is because Five years in, they're not meeting the expectations and they're ready to divorce. Wait, mm -hmm. well, what, what happened to till death do us part? And I'm not, I don't mean stay in a bad situation. That, that's mm -hmm. not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is there should be a growth that happens that you're willing to stick with each other 
and see each other through to the picture and the image that God has for the individual and for the marriage. And so that's one thing that I know that my wife and I have learned throughout. We didn't think on this level when we got married, Mm -hmm. but throughout our marriage, we've begun to learn this. And I think it's great for people to understand these things before they get married, that it's not all about you. Mm -hmm. Let's look at that other person and join hands and see each other through to the fullness and image of the reality that God sees. Yes. Wow. That's good. Wow. That's good. So we have five things for a thriving marriage from the Vincent. And that is (laughs) God first, Mm -hmm. unconditional forgiveness. I love Mm -hmm. that, Robin, unconditional forgiveness. And then we have flirting appreciation (laughs) and a willingness to grow i love that that's some key nuggets Mm -hmm. for a thriving marriage i love that yeah Yeah. that's really good we're talking about marriage is two people coming together two imperfect people because your Mm -hmm. spouse's spouse is not perfect that means Mm -hmm. you so none of us are perfect (laughs) and so we're coming together to blend this life this and become one unit and have this oneness and in order to walk that out we have to pull out the rough spots and the the lumpy stuff has to be beaten out and pushed out so that we can get to the purpose that we're going to but if we don't have that willingness to grow and even accept the challenges about ourselves that I could do better. I heard you say that a lot, James. You said I'm much better than I used to be. And I still have areas where I say I can do better. And I think that when we get to that point, that's what helps us in our oneness. It helps us in our marriages and it helps us to live out the purpose that God has for us. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, for me, what I've seen marriage do for me is honestly, it's been like my mirror, you know, it's so easy for us to project everything that we're feeling on our spouse, you know, but what I have found is it really is a mirror. You know, my spouse has become my mirror because now I have to deal with what's going on inside of me. Mm -hmm. Like just because I got to blame him for this and blame him for that, I'm still the one who was having the tantrum. And so what that does is shows that I was actually the one who was having the hissy fit, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I've had to say, okay, I have to go in the corner and deal with me because this is not all his fault. Mm -hmm. This is not all him. So I've had to begin to say, okay, you know what? Are you projecting right Mm -hmm. now or are you dealing with yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, because I can see that God divinely picked this man to be my mirror, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. so that I can begin to deal with my insecurities. You know, early in our marriage, the first thing I would always do anytime you know, we would get into an issue was, okay, I'm running, I'm escaping, I want a divorce, I Mm. want a divorce, I want a divorce, you know, I just, that was, that was always my, my way of dealing with it, Mm -hmm. you know, and the Lord was like, no, what you need to do is deal with yourself, Mm. you need to deal with yourself, like there is something inside of you that is inflamed, and you didn't know it was there, And so when the Lord began to show me, no, there's insecurity issues, you know, fears, all of these different things, I was, I had to deal with that one by one as it would manifest. Yeah. As it would manifest in me and I would try to project it on him, the Lord would say, no, reel that back in so that we can deal with that, mm-hmm. yeah. you know? And so I did many times it was just rejection because of all the things that I had gone through, you know? And once again, I was projecting it on him saying, it's all your fault. If you would have just did this, if you would have just said that, you know, all of these wrongful expectations that I had of him, but the Lord was like, okay, but where, what is that rooted in? What is that rooted in? Let's deal with the root issue, you know? And so it just, I, I think marriage has really become just seedbed, you know, where I've been able to really begin to plant the right things in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, like we were uprooting a whole lot of stuff, Mm -hmm. but then the Lord is like, now what you need to do is plant love, Mm -hmm. plant hope, plant faith, Mm -hmm. you know, begin to speak well of him, you know? And so I had to really learn how to do those things. Wow. Yeah. And and I I love it. I'm, I'm listening. 
picture in my mind, I'm picturing this garden. Yes. And I'm picturing two people coming together. It's like your garden and my garden is coming together. But the thing about it, when we come into marriage, the gardens has weeds in it. You know, the gardens have things that's dead, things that's out mm -hmm. of place. And it's like, coming together and it's like this garden it's like it <laughs> it's like plucking things out and some mm -hmm. things we're dealing with our, per, our issues personally we're looking mm -hmm. at ourselves we're looking at our own situations we're looking at inward and not outward and that's what makes the garden so beautiful when we're able to sow that seed of love and all yeah. that seed of hurt, the seed of hatred, the seed of uh, rejection, the seed of cheating, whatever we dealt with before we got into the relationship. Now we're coming together and we're helping each other as partners and supporting each other in that situation mm -hmm. and making that garden beautiful. The more you clean that garden up, the more you nourish it, the more you sow new seeds in it. I mean, you're reaping fruit from the garden that mm -hmm. you sowed, the seeds that you sowed. I mean, if you, if you sow habit, you reap habit. But if you sow that love, you get that love. And it just ties back to this beautiful garden in the book of Genesis <laughs> chapter two that God talks about this garden of Eden. And it Very all talks nice. about this whole oneness. And I just seen all this in my head and I just had to share. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know, wow. Yeah. That's well, awesome. You know what? You know why that's, I feel like that's really awesome because one of the things that um, when we were talking about it, one of the things I wrote down was protect that relationship. Mm. And mm. that's one thing, you know, throughout our marriage, you know, Robin would say that a lot. And I, I didn't have a full understanding of what that meant until I started really seeing how certain things would really try to come in and divide us, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, throughout our lives, there's always been, there's always been little things, not, not even talking about my personal issues and her personal issues, but a lot of times there were other little things that would creep in mm -hmm. that would cause division between us. And I started having to see those things and then decide that, you know what? No, my relationship is bigger than this. Mm -hmm. What she thinks means more to me than what you think, person, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I had to start thinking on that level. Yeah. You know, what's going to come into my, what's going to affect my children? How's this mm -hmm. going to affect my family unit? How's this going to mm -hmm. affect our relationship? Even times I've had to really set my children aside so that, this can be more healthy. Mm -hmm. And she's, you know, she's had to do the same, but, and it's the same with a garden, I believe, yeah. because, you know, you let certain things happen in your garden, yeah. then it can ruin the entire thing. It could be okay. one unaddressed thing mm -hmm. that ruins the entire garden. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've been in, I've been in, in, in landscaping and gardening and stuff for, for a long time. I've even had jobs doing it. And I'm telling you, you let one thing go, you let one thing come in, mm -hmm. it can it can mess up everything. Absolutely. And so you have to have the mind to really protect it with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And that's good because we it. know, we know that the adversary comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And mm -hmm. when you're in a marriage that's a marriage of purpose, yeah. he gonna try to slide in in, in little yeah. ways because mm -hmm. he thinks that he can stop that purpose. So it's mm -hmm. definitely good that you have to have the mindset to protect it, to protect mm -hmm. what is growing. Yeah. Two marriages, two married couples on here, and both of us are getting ready to celebrate 23 years. And, right. and, and we and we both know that that is because of our father, our heavenly father, right. mm -hmm. giving us everything that we need to do what we need to do. And for us being wise and willing, I'm keep going back to this, James. You didn't, you didn't open it up, willingness to grow. Yeah. And, and one thing about 23, I mean, 23 been a lot of journeys and they consider ghosts. So I, I guess, <laughs> oh, wow. I guess we're ghosts now. So oh, we yeah. Graduate to the ghosts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if someone wants to connect with you and what you're doing, where should they go? We're both on Facebook, Robin yeah. Vincent, James Vincent. Uh, we're both on Instagram, same thing. Well, and we have a Facebook page, James and Robin Vincent. You can follow us there. But at J Vincent I I I, and then that's uh, Instagram, and then at Robin dot Vincent on Instagram. On behalf of the TMZ family, we'd like to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all. Oh, thank you so it's much. It's an for honor. Us. Thank you. Honor.
Head down in the comments and tell us what one piece of advice stood out to you this week. And we want to thank you for joining us today on TMC. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button and turn on your notifications so you will be notified when we upload a video every week. And if you're listening on iTunes, rate the podcast and leave a review. We want to invite you to head on over to our leadership podcast, Lead to Greatness, where my husband is interviewing entrepreneurs and leaders every week. So we want to thank you for joining us today on TMC. Looking forward to hanging out with you again on next week as we continue to help you take your relationship from From surviving surviving to to thriving. thriving. Bye. Bye. See you next week. week.